Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at specific heat capacity, so let's get started. Now we'll start by looking at the definition of specific heat capacity, which is an important one that you could be asked to state. So it says here that the specific heat capacity, which is given the symbol lowercase c, of a substance is the amount of heat energy required to change the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. And another way of saying one kilogram of the substance is to say per unit mass, because that just means one kilogram. The units of specific heat capacity are joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So the way you would write this is joules kg to the minus one degrees Celsius to the minus one, or another way to write that is joules slash kg degrees Celsius. It then says that different materials can store different quantities of heat energy and still be at the same temperature. This is due to their specific heat capacity. Different materials have different specific heat capacities. So if you look at this table here, note that this is given on the data sheet in the exam, so you don't need to remember these numbers. So you see that water has the highest specific heat capacity here of 4,180 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Next, it would be alcohol with 2,350 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. We've then got oil, we've then got ice, and so on. So the fact that water here has the highest specific heat capacity of all of these materials means that water itself requires the greatest amount of heat energy to change the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. On the other hand, lead has the smallest specific heat capacity here, which means it requires the smallest amount of heat energy to change the one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. Lastly, we have the equation for specific heat capacity, and it says here that the relationship involving specific heat capacity is written in terms of heat energy. So we start off with EH on the left-hand side rather than the specific heat capacity C. So the relationship is EH equals CM delta T, where EH is the heat energy measured in joules, C is the specific heat capacity measured in joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, M is the mass of the substance measured in kilograms, and lastly, delta T is the change in temperature of the substance measured in degrees Celsius. So notice that we're not using Kelvin here for the units of change in temperature, it's degrees Celsius. And from the way that this relationship is written, we can actually identify a few important things. So here we've got EH and C, which would be directly proportional to each other if we ignored the mass and the change in temperature. So what this means is that the higher the specific heat capacity C, then the greater the heat energy stored. Or the smaller the specific heat capacity C, the smaller the heat energy stored. And it's also useful to look at the relationship between specific heat capacity C and change in temperature for things like heat shielding materials on spacecraft. So if we were to rearrange this equation for C, we would get C equals EH divided by M times delta T. And if we then ignored the heat energy EH and the M terms, we would have C is directly proportional to 1 over delta T. Or in other words, the specific heat capacity C is inversely proportional to the change in temperature. And what this means is that the bigger one is, the smaller the other one is. So we could say that a material with a smaller specific heat capacity would have a larger change in temperature, and the opposite is also true. So a material with a larger specific heat capacity would have a smaller change in temperature. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.